Guys, before we get into this video, I do just want to say I'm going to be talking about the updates that have been taking place on Ultimate Team in the next few days. It's a 20 minute video, so uh, if you want to like pause the video now, go into a game of FIFA, go get yourself some food or a drink or something like that, I'd appreciate it if you could watch it to the end because I've given my all my thoughts and opinions on what EA have done uh, to the game in the last few days. So yeah, it's a long video, uh, go get a drink, go into a game of FIFA, you don't really need to watch it, it's more of just a, uh, a podcast, just listen to it. Hope you guys do enjoy it, if you do, smash that like button. Let let me know your thoughts and opinions about what I've said in the video and yeah, let's start the video and I hope you guys enjoy it. Right then, finally, I suppose it is my time as a FIFA YouTuber, I should upload a video and talk to you guys about what EA have done to Ultimate Team in the last couple of days and how they have completely fucked up. Now before I started recording this video, I tried to, to write down on this notepad here as many positives as I could for what EA have done. And to be completely honest, I struggled to find one. So what I'm gonna talk about in this video, I'm gonna try and keep it really, really brief because I know when I do these kind of videos, I can talk on for absolutely ages as to why I've got pair check up there. I don't actually have a clue. Um, but yeah, I've got a couple of questions I'm going to answer that I've come up with myself that I just want to get the answers across to you guys. And I did also tweet out asking whether you guys had any questions that you want answering that hadn't been answered yet by any other YouTuber then I'll do my best to try and answer that. So, I guess I should start the video with what have EA done? Now, two days ago, it was actually the day I got back from America, EA introduced something to Ultimate Team called Price Ranges. Now, if there are Price Ranges, I will show you on an example with Petter Check. If I went to go and sell Petter Check, who normally I think would be around three to five thousand coins. You know, he's an 85 rated goalkeeper from the Premier League, so his price would be around three to five thousand. Now, if I was to go and sell him, as you can see underneath his card, he has a minimum price of 150 coins. So that is the minimum you can sell him if you want to to sell your check. However, no one ever whether you're a buyer or a seller, will be able to exceed 9,000 coins. That is the maximum value EA have put on Petr Cech's head. And that is for every single player. The ranges change from player to player. Let's have a look at 86 rated company. You can see here, you can't sell your company for 42,500 coins. That is the minimum you will get. However, you won't be able to get more than 60,000 coins for your company. So that is what they have done. They've put it for every single player across Ultimate Team, whether it's a bronze, silver, gold, in form, man of the match, team of the year, you name it, they have introduced that price range, two figures, a minimum and a maximum for every single player on Ultimate Team. Okay, so that's what they have done. Why have they done it? Now, when EA tried to explain why they have done it, they came, it was actually kind of funny, the bullshit that they came up with was brilliant. There is only one reason why they have done this, and if you, th if you think there is any other reason as to why they have done this, then you probably need a reality check or your brain checked. It's to get rid of coin selling. That is the only reason EA have done this. We're still staring at company's forehead. There's like, that's the only reason they have done it. They have only done it to try and get rid of coin selling. Now, a lot of people have bought coins. I promote a coin site. It's in the description. I don't try and hide the fact I promote coins. You know, I wouldn't be doing my job if I tried to hide the fact. A majority of YouTubers do promote coin site. Yes, we do get paid for it. I'm not going to deny we get paid for it. The 99% of FIFA YouTubers have a coin site. There are a select few that don't. It is literally up to that YouTuber whether they do and don't have one. No one's forcing them not to have one. No one's forcing them to have one. It's simply down to the YouTuber. Now, I know I am breaking terms and conditions promoting a coin site. I know that. I completely... If I got banned for promoting coins, I'm not going to make a video and be like, I've been banned from promoting coins, that's su such bullshit, I didn't deserve that. Of course I deserve it, I'm breaking the terms and conditions, I know that. I'm doing something that I shouldn't be, and I am fully accepting the consequences that come my way because of it. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to say like, I'm perfect, like, oh yeah, I'm promoting coins, there's nothing wrong with it. There is things wrong with it, we're absolutely ripping EA off. However, EA aren't helping themselves at all. I know we are losing EA money, but they are not helping themselves. So we're gonna try and get into that in the later on in this video. Now, that is why they've done it. They've done it to get rid of coin selling, because if you bought coins, which I'm sure a lot of you watching this video will have done, 
If you bought coins, you'd buy a really, really, really shit player, and you'd list it for a million coins, which is like one million times his actual true value. The coin type would buy it, and you'd get the, the coins. Happy days. Now, because each and every player has a maximum value now, you can't sell a player for more than he's actually worth, you know? I've got Di Maria here. I can't sell him for millions and millions of coins because that's not what he's worth. I can only sell him for two or 300,000 coins because that is what his actual card value is worth, which has been decided by EA. Now, how has this affected Ultimate Team? It has fucked it completely. It has gone to absolute shit. Right, I want to show you one thing here. I'm going to go to the transfer market. 639,463 live transfers. That is shocking. Normally, you'd be looking at around 900,000 to 1 million. The transfer market sales, as of right now, have almost halved. And I'm recording this in the afternoon of a Thursday, mid-evening. So a lot of people will be playing this game right now. Now, as to why that has happened, I'm going to show you actually. If we go back to the squad, I'm going to show you why that has happened. Okay, let's have a look at this 86 rated Aguero that I bought fairly recently. I bought him just before the upgrades were released, which was probably three or four weeks ago now. I bought him for 390,000 coins. Okay, so nearly 400,000 coins I spent of the coins on my account to get Aguero into my team. Now, with this new update that EA have brought into the game, I can only maximum get 290,000 coins back. Maximum. I'm automatically, instantly, even if I don't even sell him for the maximum, I've already lost 100,000 uh, 100, coins. And if I sell him for the minimum of 190, I've automatically, just like that, because of EA's, they've just decided it's gonna happen, I've lost 200,000 coins. And I'm not just saying that as a FIFA YouTuber. If you have Aguero and you've bought him just like I have, it's more than likely you have lost out on coins as well. Let's have a look at Hazard. I bought him for, again, just under 400,000 coins. Now, a tech rated Hazard, if I wanted to go and sell him, I'm going to be selling him for a minimum of 310. Okay, so instantly, if I sell him for the minimum, I've lost out on 85,000 coins. There is, however, the possibility that I could sell him for the maximum of 470 and I could make a profit of 75,000 coins. However, that is not the case. I want to go and show you how there are so many players missing on Ultimate Team. And that is simply because the prices are so low at the minute, people don't want to be losing out on their coins. Because of that, they're just refusing to sell their players. So for example, that Aguero, I will lose out 200,000 coins if I sell him for the minimum. Now, do I want to sell that Aguero and lose 200,000 coins? Fuck no, of course I don't. So what I'm going to do to prevent myself losing 200,000 coins, I'm just going to keep hold of him. And that is what everyone is doing with so many players. Because that price band is lower than what they actually paid for, they don't want to sell the player because they don't want to accept the fact they're going to lose out on 200,000 coins. So, let's have a look at Cristiano Ronaldo. He has a really, really, really high price brand band of around 6 million coins. Let me know if you can see an open bid. Right, there's our first open bid. Five minutes in, and it's for 12 million coins on the new Man of the Match Ronaldo. Let's keep going on a non-rare Ronaldo. Imagine if you had Ronaldo and you want to and you want to sell him. Okay, we're into 20 minutes. No one is bidding on a Ronaldo. No, it's impossible to sell Ronaldo. Another example, yesterday, if you watched my pack opening, I got Robin on this on uh, on the, it was actually on this account as well. 90 rated Iron Robin is normal card. No one's bidding on him. I cannot sell him. Now, the lowest I can sell him for is 750,000 coins. People are trying. So some people here are accepting the fact that they will take the lowest price they can get for Robin and that no one still wants to buy him. No one wants to buy him whatsoever. So what people are ending up with is they've got all these players on their account and and they just can't sell them. They want to get coins, maybe to open packs, and they simply cannot sell their players that they have in their account, which is absolutely crazy. And that's all because, because of this price brand that EA have introduced, 
people don't want to lose out on coins, so they're just thinking, well, if I'm going to lose that, I might as well just keep the player. And that has resulted in almost half the number of sales. Look at that, we're up to 651,000 now, when normally, sometimes you'd see that go over a million. But because of this new update that EA have released, there is not a chance in hell that that is going over a million anytime soon. So anyway, let's have a look at some more of these questions. How is this going to affect YouTubers? Now, obviously, YouTubers buy lots of coins to make videos for you guys. They will buy the new informs that come out. They buy new players to make squad builders. Uh, they buy the coins for the legends in their series or something like that. Now, they aren't being able to buy coins. Series and players and stuff like that are going to be a lot, lot harder to get their hands on. How is this going to affect the general user? Now, one excuse that EA gave uh, to ask why they were doing this update, they said to give the general user a higher chance of getting the higher rated players. How? How on earth is this update going to allow people that don't buy coins any closer to getting their hands on Ronaldo? It's, if anything, they've made it 10 times harder. So what EA are trying to say is, this new update that they've brought into the game, it is going to let, let their average 12 year old for example that literally just plays this game for fun is going to give that kid a higher chance of getting his hands on Ronaldo. Is that true? Hell fucking no. How is that kid going to get 6 million coins? It's impossible. Air James did a video yesterday where he actually calculated from just playing this game, not opening packs, not buying coins, how long it would take you to get 6 million coins which is what you need to try and buy yourself a Ronaldo. And he calculated it would take you 20, <coughs> I'm actually coughing at giving this figure, 27 weeks of non-stop, just literally playing the game solid. For don't go come out of a game, don't put your controller down, don't turn your Xbox off, 27 weeks. That's six months. That is six months of playing this game just so that the average non-cheat, no one, someone that doesn't buy packs, someone that doesn't buy coins can get their hands on Ronaldo. Is that ever going to work because of what EA have done? And not to mention, a lot of people aren't even selling their players because they don't want to lose out on coins. I'm extremely grateful for the fact I'm on an Xbox One. If you're on PS4, there are so, 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 so many players that aren't even on the market. It's impossible to get because no one's selling them because everyone doesn't want to lose out on coins. So that is absolutely ridiculous. How do I feel about this? I'm fucked off at the fact it's just completely fucked over the market. A lot of people say I'm fucked off at the fact coins, coin selling has gone. I, I, yes, I'm a little bit gutted. Anyone, any YouTuber that says that they're not gutted at the fact coin, uh, coin selling has gone is a liar. I'll say, I'll say that straight out there. But I don't think any YouTuber is saying that they're not gutted. But people are finding a workaround around this. If people can go on to FIFA and a hacker can get 10 million coins just like that, a hacker will without doubt, I will put my bank account on the fact they will find a workaround to be able to sell coins. And I will, I will almost promise you that in about two weeks time, coin selling will be back. Because everyone is going to find a workaround. There will be ways around it. Right, questions from you guys. Will this continue on to FIFA 16? Now, if this idea that EA have implemented onto Ultimate Team was introduced at the start of FIFA 16, I would have probably supported it and said, yeah, this is a really good idea. You know, it wouldn't have fucked the market up at all because the game has literally just started. The only reason this thing EA have introduced has fucked up the market is because it's halfway through FIFA. Everyone has all their players. Some people have tens of million coins sat in their account. And now that this has come in, everything has just gone to shit because of all the reasons I've said in this video. Will it change back? Now, that is a really interesting question. Uh, this idea, I've actually been told, this idea um, that EA have introduced into, into Ultimate Team, apparently it was introduced to uh, the sports game Madden, the American sports game Madden, and apparently it fucked things up so hard after a while, uh, well, it's EA run as well, uh, they actually went back and uh, got rid of the idea. Is that gonna happen to uh, FIFA? Maybe, a lot of people did think that this uh, new idea they've introduced was only going to last a couple of days, it was gonna fuck things so hard, EA wouldn't have had a choice but to um, 
to get rid of the idea. But uh, as it stands, EA are seeming to be very persistent as to not get rid of it. What do EA want to happen now? EA want everyone to spend their money on FIFA points. Are people going to spend their money on FIFA points? No, they are not. Let me show you the price of FIFA points, okay? You can get yourself 12,000 FIFA points for, it's actually on a sale here by EA, it was 80 pounds, 80 pounds for 12,000 FIFA points. For 80 pounds, you could buy yourself like three to four million coins, which is like 10 times the amount that you'd be able to open uh, on packs with 12,000 FIFA points. That's what EA wants to happen. Are people buying FIFA points now because of this update? No, because look at the pricing. If EA actually wanted to compete against coin sellers, yes, I can understand people buying coins are losing EA money. If they really wanted to compete, lower the price of these FIFA points. I'm going to open a pack here to show you are packs worth it if you open with FIFA points. Right, a 7.5k pack. Right, if I get a team of the city, if I get like a man of the match now, this is actually fucked my whole video. Look how shit. Right, you're spending 150 FIFA points here on this pack. <coughs> Who am I getting? Who am I getting? That! That is why people don't spend real money on packs. Why do I want Vargas, the non-rare Spanish goalkeeper, and that's just cost me like, what, 50p or something like that? 50p to a pound or whatever it is, whatever it converts to. Do I want that for that? No, that is why people are buying coins and not buying FIFA points. If people wanted to relate, they should have just lowered the number, uh, the price of FIFA points, and then it would just equal it out. And a lot of people would have stopped buying coins because they are breaking the terms and conditions and they're scared of getting banned, and they would have just started to buy FIFA points. But EA, for some reason, don't want to be, yes, I will just discard that all. They don't want to lower FIFA points, right. Can price ranges change? EA actually tweeted yesterday that the range of players will be getting updated in the next few days, in the next few weeks, which um, I don't know how that is going to go. Striker Ronaldo, before this update was introduced, he was going for 15 million coins. 15 million, which is fine. It's the first ever Ronaldo we've had as an inform, as a striker. That price is expected. No one was confused at that price. EA introduced this price, bra uh, uh, whatever, minimum and maximum, and do you know what the maximum was for Cristiano Ronaldo, striker? From 15 million, EA had set it at 800,000. 800,000, so less than a 15th of his actual price before this update. So why, why, what happens when EA do that? If you have a striker Ronaldo, are you going to sell him? For one fifteenth of the price? No, you're not. So no one's going to be selling Strike Ronaldo. They have updated that uh, price now of that Strike Ronaldo, but that is just an example. Suarez, 90 rated Suarez, was actually more expensive than 91 rated Suarez. How does that work out? A higher rated Suarez was cheaper. So why would people sell their Suarezes if the prices are this fucked up? Anyway, uh, where are the players? We've already discussed that. Someone asked, where are the players? No one wants to sell them because the uh, pricing is so fucked up. They don't want to lose out on coins. No one can even afford the players. No one wants to spend their coins. No one's selling and no one's buying. The market is literally at standstill. Right, is this going to help on FIFA, fix, FIFA 16? I would like to say yes. A lot of things are pointing towards the fact that I want to say yes for this. However, Glitches are still going to be there. Whether you can or can't buy coins, as a consumer and as a customer, you might not be able to buy coins, but the glitches and hackers are still going to be there. They're still going to be sat there at the click of their fingers making 10 million coins. Another click of the fingers, they've just made another 10 million coins. And what are they going to do if hackers are just sat there with like 100 million coins on their account? What are they going to do? They are going to control the market. No matter what price the players are set at by EA, the hackers will still be able to sit there and just buy all the Ronaldos. If a Ronaldo does get listed, they'll buy instantly because coins to them, as a hacker, aren't anything. So EA think they will control the pricing of the players. They won't. Next year on FIFA 16, as that is what I think, 
hackers are still not being stopped. They may have controlled the, um, that's all EA have stopped here. They have stopped the flow of money. It is harder to send coins from account to account. Is it harder for a hacker to make 10 million coins? No, it was as easy as it is today as it was four weeks ago, six weeks ago, four months ago. They can still do it. So what they're going to do is they're just going to have an account with 100 million coins and they are just going to buy all the run out of those and EA are just going to be sat there thinking maybe we should have targeted the hackers instead of the customers that are buying coins. But anyway, they are all the questions covered. I know, oh god, I've nearly talked for 20 minutes. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, then please do leave a like. I'm interested to see if you have actually watched the whole of this video. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below, because I'm interested to see what everyone's thinking. I thought I'd give my two cents or 20 minutes, as I should say, uh, into this whole topic, but I pretty much covered it, so I don't think I'll be talking about it again. I've pretty much included everything in this video. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do leave a like. Until the next one, I'll be speaking to you guys later. Take care.